Happy holidays, everybody. Tis the season to be geeky, and geeky we shall be. And tonight's episode, as the title suggests, is all about giving that magical gift of flight to that special someone on your list. So sit back, grab your favorite cup of cheer, and let's dig right in. Ho, 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 and happy holidays, my friends. If you are at all interested in purchasing any of the drones that I talk about here tonight, please look down in the product links below in the video description and make your purchases there. You still get Amazon's great low pricing, their legendary customer service and return policy, and you'll be helping out this channel as well. The good news is there's been no greater time to be getting into drones because there are more options than ever out there at all kinds of different price points. So we're gonna take a look at everything from 100 bucks all the way up to 1,000 bucks. We're gonna crack down the specs and crunch the numbers and then I'm gonna give you my opinion on what I think might be the best one for you. So we need to start at the bottom of the list at the $100 price point. And nestled in down here, we have a tiny little drone called the Tello from a company called Rise. Let's take a look at the specs. This tiny drone features a five megapixel camera capable of 720p video shooting. It was created in collaboration with DJI and features some rock solid stabilization and altitude hold as well as some pretty neat pre-programmed flight modes and pretty solid build quality for its price point. This drone starts at 99 bucks and if you want to get the boost bundle which comes with two extra batteries, some cables, a charger, and some other extra goodies, you can tack on another 50 bucks. In my opinion, quite worth it if you are interested in this drone. The camera on this little guy is fixed, meaning there's no gimbal. So when the drone turns or tilts forward or back or tips side to side, the camera's gonna tip with it. So if you're wanting that nice smooth cinematic footage you see on a lot of YouTube videos online, it's not gonna happen. Secondly, it only shoots 720p video. Uh, but in my opinion, it doesn't really look too bad. And the pictures it takes, aren't too shabby either. They're kind of cell phone quality from maybe five or six years ago. This drone also does not include a controller and you can buy a third party controller that you can set up and configure to work with this drone. However, that tax on an additional $50 for that. Otherwise, you use this little control app on your phone that has these virtual control pads. It's not the greatest, but it actually does work halfway decent. The second downside to this little guy is of course gonna be battery life. Small batteries means small battery life. You can expect maybe about 10 minutes total of fly time out of this thing. And lastly, this baby is tiny and it's very lightweight. So taking it outside when there's any kind of wind is a bit of a risk, but the manufacturers themselves don't even recommend it. So if you do plan on taking it outside, be very, very careful. So now we need to jump into the cinematic drones. And we're gonna start this one off with the Mavic Mini SE. Unfortunately, I don't have one here tonight to show you, but surprisingly enough, it's almost exactly the size of this 12 ounce soda can. It weighs less than half a pound, so you do not need to register it with the FAA if you live in the United States, and may also come into play in various countries across the world that have weight limits on their drones. So let's take a look at the numbers real quick. As mentioned, we're weighing in at less than 249 grams. Its tiny folding design makes it one of the most portable and compact cinematic drones. Dual GPS radios, that wonderful three-axis gimbal, and downward ground sensing. A 1 over 2.3 12 megapixel camera, capable of 2.7K at 30 frames per second or Full HD at 60. So what all this means is the camera shoots 
2.7K. This is what they call Quad HD. It's not 4K, but it's better than 1080. This may or may not be a big deal to you, depending on what you plan to use the drone for. And of course, the 30 minutes of airtime is gonna be true to life, more like 25, but that's still pretty good to compare to where we were about three to five years ago. The quick shot modes are actually pretty cool, especially if you're really into taking like the selfie shots and you want those really nice smooth circle around shots or pullbacks. These quick shots are what can do that for you with just a couple clicks of the button to get a nice smooth professional looking shot. This drone has also got GPS and downward sensors crammed into the little body of it which make a huge difference when it comes to altitude holding and position holding. And in all of my testing, these DJI drones are rock solid. When they sit in place, it's like sitting on a tripod and they do extremely well in high winds. And the three-way access gimbal is gonna really give you that nice, smooth, cinematic looking footage. And DJI is world renowned for the quality of their gimbal systems. One of the big downsides of this drone at least for me is, is that the control signal for this drone is basically an enhanced Wi-Fi signal. DJI says you can get up to 2.5 miles of range out of that, but that's in the most perfect and ideal conditions. However, this changes dramatically when you toss in objects like trees and buildings and other radio and Wi-Fi interference. In my testing, I have had significant trouble with Wi-Fi drones, even getting a thousand feet away from me in crowded situations such as this. And for me, that's a big deal breaker. Now we can take a look at price. This starting price for this drone, including the drone, a controller, a battery, and all the cables and bits and bobs you need to get started, starts at $299, which is not a bad deal for a drone like this. Next, we gotta take a look at the DJI Mini 2. This little guy has the same size and form factor as the good old Mini SE, but comes ram-packed with even more awesome features. So let's dive into the specs real quick. Once again, we're coming in at under 250 grams or half a pound in the same wonderfully compact design of the SE. 30 minutes of fly time, triple band GPS radio, and that downward obstacle sensing. A 1 over 2.3 12 megapixel camera like before, but we now have the ability to shoot 4K at 30 frames per second, Quad HD and Full HD at 60 frames per second. More than double the bit rate of the SE, and the inclusion of OcuSync 2.0 slaps the cherry on top. So let's talk about what all those numbers mean. It kind of looks like the camera is almost exactly the same as the SE, but it's not. This camera shoots 4K video at 30 frames per second and is capable of shooting 1080p video at 60 frames per second. That would help you out getting those nice, smooth, dramatic slow-mo shots. But here's the feature that takes the cake for me on this one, and that is the transmission technology that this drone uses. DJI calls it OcuSync 2.0, and it is amazing. They say it can get over six miles of range in optimum conditions. That, in fact, you would probably run out of battery before you ran out of transmission signal. But when you take it into a crowded situation that has lots of trees, buildings, interference, and obstacles, it performs extremely well. I took this out into a snow-covered forest flew the drone out of a thick snow covered tree canopy and thousands of feet out to take some epic shots of a beautiful waterfall and I had absolutely no trouble with signal penetration whatsoever. And even in more of my closer range city and suburban flying, I've never really had much trouble with the signal on these drones at all. But this increase in camera specs and the OcuSync technology does come at a price. The starting point for this drone is going to be $449. This includes the drone, a battery, the controller, the cables, and all the bits and pieces you need to get started. However, you can buy the Fly More bundle 
that includes two additional batteries, extra propellers, a multi-charger, a carry bag, and a couple other fancy little treats for $5.99. It's definitely well worth it if you plan on buying that stuff anyway. In my opinion, this really is the best mid-level drone that would fit the bill for most casual hobby flyers out there. However, there is one particular caveat that we need to address here, and that is if you are an action sports kind of person, such as skiing, snowboarding, and you want your drone to be able to follow behind you or in front of you or beside you or whatever to get those awesome action shots, this drone will not be able to do that. That being said, welcome to the Mavic Air 2. This is currently my workhorse drone. It is slightly bigger than the mini series and weighs a little over a pound. So now you will have to register it with the FAA in order to fly. So let's take a look at the specs. The weight comes in at 570 grams or 1.2 pounds. And as said, it's a little bit bigger than the mini series. We get a little bit more fly time, two GPS radios, internal storage of eight gigabytes, a half inch 12 megapixel camera capable of 48 megapixel enhanced mode, and the inclusion of more higher end features as well as HDR and different panorama modes. We can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second or full HD at 240 frames per second as well as HDR modes. The addition of color profiles. The latest video codecs. And a bit rate of 120 megabits per second. And now we get the inclusion of forward and backward and downward obstacle sensing. Which allows the system to have the APAS 3.0 system. and of course, OcuSync 2.0. So now we are dipping our toes into the more professional specifications. The half inch sensor of this camera can shoot 4K video at 60 frames per second and 1080p video at 240 frames per second for sweet looking ultra slow motion. It can take enhanced 48 megapixel still pictures. It has high dynamic range video and photos. It has a greater dynamic range. It has greater exposure values and exposure bracketing. It has the ability to take time lapse, slow mo, and even night lapse shots. And these are a lot of fun to play with and really open up the creativity on what you can do with these drones. This drone also comes chalked in with OcuSync 2.0, which we already talked about. An amazing piece of transmission technology, so you will not need to worry about range or signal penetration in most situations. This drone also has the introduction of obstacle avoidance sensors. It has obstacle avoidance on the front and rear of the drone. This allows the drone to be able to sense obstacles in front of or behind it and be able to give you warning that you're about to crash and stop you before you do crash. And I have to honestly say this is a pretty neat feature to have because there are a lot of times when you're really concentrating on getting your shot exactly the way you want it and you're not totally paying attention to maybe how close you are to an object in front of or especially behind you. It also allows this drone to have active track, or what many people would consider follow me mode, which allows the drone to get set on a specific object and be able to track that object while it moves at speed for some great action shots. This drone also has a technology called APAS, or Advanced Pilot Assisted System. And this takes those obstacle avoidance sensors and is able to detect objects in front of and behind the drone and automatically avoid them while the drone is in flight. This is a great feature once again for using active track. And if it comes up on an obstacle, say a tree branch or light post, it can automatically avoid it for you. Pretty sweet, huh? 
Now the base price for this drone, of course, the drone, the controller, a battery, and all the cables and crap you need to get started, starts at $799. You can also, of course, buy a Fly More bundle that includes the two extra batteries, the multi-charger, the carry case, and even camera filters, which are basically sunglasses for your drone, and a couple other handy gadgets for $9.99. So now we move up to the DJI Air S. It pretty much has the same size and form factor as the Air 2, but is packed with even more amazing features. So let's take a look. We're now weighing in at 594 grams or 1.3 pounds. We have the same dimensions as the Air 2. We still got over 30 minutes of fly time, triple band GPS radio, 8 gigs of onboard storage, an incredible 1 inch camera capable of 20 megapixels and a high pixel density, an 88 degree field of view, and an aperture of 2.8. Once again that 20 megapixel camera and a smattering of more pro level features, HDR, as well as the ability to shoot in RAW or JPEG, now capable of 5.4K at 30 frames per second. 4K at 60 frames per second and Full HD at 120 frames per second. We now have obstacle sensing on the front, the back, downward, and upward facing. And DJI's latest OcuSync 3.0 transmission system. So what does this all mean? Coming in at 1.2 pounds means that you are going to have to register this drone with the FAA. The one inch 20 megapixel camera on this baby is to die for. The ability to shoot 5.4K video allows you to do some great things in post-production with cropping as well as digital zoom. They've cram packed this thing with some top notch pro features like automatic exposure bracketing, HDR panoramas as well as spherical panoramas, hyperlapse, time lapse, night lapse. We have improved bitrate and pixel density for greater saturation and dynamic range and exposure values. They've added 360 degree obstacle avoidance. So you have a bubble of obstacle sensing around the drone. With improved APAS and active track technology, this makes this drone a monster for those action sports enthusiasts. This drone can autonomously track you through the forest or the, down the slopes and automatically dodge objects in its path. And in my testing of this, it did actually quite good. The base price of this drone, however, is $999. And if you want the Fly More package with the added batteries and all those other goodies, we're talking $1299. However, with the Mavic 2 line now being discontinued and the entry level price of a base Mavic 3 being more than twice that amount makes this drone a pretty damn good value in my opinion. So what's gonna make the best choice for you is really gonna come down to what features you're going to want or need and of course the size of your budget. One pro tip however, if there's a specific feature that you think you may need or want in the future, don't cheap out. Either save up for it or go ahead and splurge now because you're going to grow out of your drone in a couple months time and end up spending that money anyway. Trust me on that one. If you're new to drones or you're going to be a casual user and don't think you're ever going to need or want any of those extra bells or whistles and you're just going to be sharing your stuff on social media anyway, maybe the SE is a good choice for you. With GPS and downward obstacle sensors, makes this thing stable as a tripod, and that three-axis gimbal is going to give you that nice, smooth, cinematic-looking footage. The lack of OcuSync really makes this drone hard for me to recommend. So, if you can spend just a little bit more, the Mini 2 really is the best of the best as far as mid-range drones go. The inclusion of OcuSync 2.0 in and of itself makes it worth the price of entry. And of course, toss in 4K video capabilities and more enhanced camera options as well as flight modes. I can completely recommend this drone. It would keep most YouTubers and hobbyists happy for quite some time to come. However, if you're an action sports enthusiast and want a drone that can autonomously follow you and record those epic moments, 
you're gonna need something more. The Air 2 is a great jack of all trades drone. It currently is my workhorse drone. It takes excellent video footage and the ability to shoot enhanced 48 megapixel stills look amazing. It has all of the advanced features you might need or want for controlling exposure and shutter speed, as well as some great autonomous flight mode, the addition of front and rear obstacle avoidance, and active track, as well as APAS, make this a great drone for action sports as well. However, if you need or want the best of the best, the Air 2S really knocks it out of the park. That one inch 20 megapixel camera is to die for. It takes incredible stills and video footage and the ability to shoot in 5.4K really adds some versatility in post-production. OcuSync 3.0, 360 degree obstacle avoidance, Active Track and APAS have all been upgraded, makes this drone an absolute monster. And really at that price point makes this drone quite reasonable, especially with the Mavic 3 being priced at over $2,000 for the base model. And once again, I say if you are interested at all in purchasing any of these drones, please check the product links down below in the description. You're gonna get Amazon's great low prices and customer service, as well as helping me out a little bit. And if you liked this video and found it useful, please let me know by smashing the old thumbs up button. Of course, share it with folks that you think might also like it. And if you have anything to say, add, or questions to ask, Please let me know down in the comments. I always love hearing from you guys. Have yourself a wonderful holiday season and we'll see you all soon.